Dark Zero still somehow looking to get themselves back into a top four and stay there, and TSM are looking for stability where they've not had it so far for the whole of the stage. Welcome back to the North American League Analyst Desk. Jacob, Jesse, Connor with you to break down TSM against Dark Zero, second game of the day. A match that usually is a, a game of two behemoths, but for some reason right now, it feels like it's kind of fallen off the wagon, so to speak. Well, it's tough, Jacob, when your top two teams, the big superstars everybody likes to watch, are sitting kind of in the middle to bottom middle of the leaderboards. But I think both these teams are looking for opportunities to bounce back. We know that both TSM and Dark Zero have opportunities in them. Like, TSM are still the world champions. They should still be able to win a lot of these games. So we'll see in this matchup if that actually comes to fruition. Yeah, and especially with how TSM have been struggling so much, nothing has changed. No yeah. roster moves. And same thing on the side of DZ that you would expect that, hey, this is the same team that both of these rosters did pretty well at SI. You know, their top four in A, quote unquote, just over and over and over and over again. But where is that success once again? Nothing has changed, it's just boggling. It feels like Dark Zero just took some time to like ferment, let the seeds grow, figure out what they needed to do to actually like have that plant sprout up into something substantial. And now we're breaking down what they look like because again, this Dark Zero roster looks pretty darn good and made a deeper run than I think most people expected back to Six Invitational. And we're talking NJR, we're talking Pambazoo. They've got all the highlight fraggers to their name. And right now they're not in the world's worst position, but still they'd like to be higher given the maps that they've played on so far that are usually bastions for them. Yeah, and even that really close game of Villa against Beast Ghost, that's a little bit worrying because you have players like Canadian who, you know, he's lifted a hammer or two in his time. I think we can agree that he's one of the greatest players to ever touch the game of Siege. Is the sky also yeah. blue, Connor? <laughs> like, like what? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. I think it's a matter of perspective, but you also, you, you touched on Pamba. I love me some Pamba party time. Yeah. He's a great player finally coming into his own and has been a highlight fragger for this roster, even if he's uh, kind of in the power positions on the Wamai, or even if he's just kind of chilling back on Nomad, he still finds his way to get involved. Yeah, and I want to talk about Pamba's uh, partner in crime, if you will, as well. I think Hyper had an amazing game the other week against Astralis. 4-0 on entry, the only positive entry player on the team in that matchup. 71 cost, 1.25 rating. But the thing I loved about him was how flexible he was attacking an organ for that squad. There were a couple of rounds where, like, typically the Nomad role is going to stick to kind of Canadian, those more supportive players. But when they needed, like, a Sledge and a Maverick and they needed a couple of these other operators and Nomad was still kind of left up, Hyper was able to seamlessly move into that role go on a pinching play and he got two kills when the rest of the team was kind of pushing in for the main uh, brunt of the angle there he was coming in the backside going for that pinch even though that's typically not his role so the ability for him to kind of flex to wherever the team needs him despite being their main primary entry fragger has been fantastic to watch and I think it's a huge boon to Dark Zero what do you think so far just for this DZ team overall? Is, is this kind of where we expected them to be? We've known them to be notorious on slow starts in, in stages in the past, and sometimes it feels like they, they can squeak into that top four placement, sometimes maybe even undeserved, or if we don't know who's meant to be like within that top four. Where does this DZ see, uh, team sit currently? Well, DZ has also had an easier start to their season than what is going to be the ending side, yeah. where they're playing like Oxygen and Space Station all back to back to back. Kind it's of a good thing be, they're getting TSM out of the way early then? Yeah, I guess, because this is going to be a litmus test. This is going to be, hey, is this the DZ that we know and love? Are they actually going to be a, com a competitor this season? Yeah. At this stage, are they going to be going to the major? Are they fighting for that top four spot? Or are they just going to kind of be mediocre? I certainly hope not. I mean, we've seen this Dark Zero team at times take a little bit of, like, a little bit to get going. Mm -hmm. But now we're at a stage where you've had this exact roster for long enough that the expectation is you need to have this sorted. If you don't already, for some reason, something isn't working back behind the scenes, that's not a problem that you can necessarily fix nearly as adequately. Yeah, I think the last three games that Dark Zero played, they really got caught off guard, right? For Beast Coast, they kind of had these far off roams and it took a little while for Dark Zero to figure out what was going on and figure out a counter to Sweater being on the other side of the map in uh, some of those defensive rounds. And then they were struggling to determine where some of Parabellum were and where their swings would be coming from in that matchup. Uh, and then Astralis ran some like really early kind of aggressive pushes that Dark Zero never seems to be ready for. So you're hoping that Dark Zero may be able to work on that a little bit, work on anticipating where players are going to be coming from, both on the offense and defense. I'm hoping against T TSM, it won't be the same. They're the world champs. Hopefully you've been water viewing them. You can kind of expect where they're going to come through. You know this team, you know these players, but you never know. I mean, TSM are a world-class team and they can always spice it up. Yeah, and probably the biggest point that you made towards Dark Zero is kind of the way they attack. Mm -hmm. They are not a going to go around the river kind of person. They're going to push <laughs> straight through it. Right. They're going to go through your setups. They're not going to try anything cheeky. They're just going to try to come in and assert dominance. 
Their opponents on the opposite side of the table, the big black and white American Bastion, the current world champions. Only one win to their name. Some losses to some very surprising opponents, a win against an expected opponent. It almost feels as though this entire run for TSM is antithetical to the team that we thought we knew from before. And there were some things I thought were interesting spoken about by Merck when he did a podcast earlier talking about how when they were at the Six Invitational, they didn't have a whole bunch of time to prepare. They kind of went in and just decided we're going to adapt to the teams that are there in the moment, counter stride immediately off what we see. Don't focus too much on prep time because they didn't have a lot of time between the qualifier and the Six Invitational. And now they're here with time to prep and now they find themselves in a hole. Yeah, I wonder if it is just a matter of the fact that in NAL we've got a lot of really strong support staffs, and I'm not saying TSM have a weak support staff, I think they've got one of the strongest. Obviously, Pojoman does so much work behind the scenes, and Data as well, I feel like is a fantastic coach right alongside him. So, it's you difficult for them, I think, to, to be able to try to get in with some of these uh, some of these openers, especially on defense. You know, Bolo's maybe having a bit of a tough time, I think Geo as well has been struggling for the squad, not having the same explosive impact that we sometimes saw at SI. Yeah, and I think a lot of it might actually come down to the map choice as well. They've gone to True. theme park twice, and I think that they have a core misunderstanding on some of the mechanics of that map and how it's overall changed with the meta. Map choice is one thing, but we are now in a situation where it's only best of ones. And out of curiosity, another thing that Merck said in that interview, mm -hmm. because they're playing in best of ones, the idea of going for a hero player doing something more risky is something they don't want to do nearly as much. They're more tentative in that aspect because if you lose a round in a best of one, sometimes that can cost you the entire game because there's not that many more like second chances in that regard. Do you think TSM are playing that way? Yeah, I think absolutely. And I just mentioned his name, uh, Geo not having some of those explosive moments. That is kind of what I'm talking about, right? Because he used to play all these like aggressive offsite positions where he could have a really strong impact and then maybe have like fall back and have really good impact. Uh, anchor player as well but unfortunately like he just hasn't been doing the same thing um, I wasn't sure if maybe they're still kind of figure that out or maybe it's hard to be consistent in that role but Geo certainly has not had the same uh, oh, yeah impact on the game big issue in here is also their defenses we've questioned that like nearly every single time whether it's Bolo or it's somebody else there are some things that we want to take a look at for TSM's defense overall because this probably is the most worrying thing about it if your executes are one thing but your defenses need to be solid and so far are they yeah, Jacob, I want to talk you through the history of TSM FTX on defense. Back in the NAL Stage 3, they had a 63% defensive win rate. It was the best in the entire league. They went to SI. They still racked up a 55% defensive win rate. They did even better at the SI qualifiers. They were crushing it all through there. We've come into the NAL now Stage 1, and they've got just a 40% defensive win rate average. 8% below what we're seeing from the majority of other teams. This is a big problem for them. The stats aren't lining up. We've seen it in their Rome games. We've seen it in their lack of explosion of uh, engagements as well and it's just not been landing for them yeah and it's almost seemed like most of their roams that you were talking about are almost like solo-esque kind of roams they aren't really rooted in utility of what we expect to see out of tsm the main one that kind of pops in my head is their cafe the reading room defense where they have so much utility upstairs and that's where the team really shines yeah. and when you have you're bringing people to maps like theme park where you can set up those wide based utility rooms you can have the power positions you can bring the one magnets a great yes is even some shields and all of a sudden those areas are like a bunkered fortress as opposed to somebody just crouch walking around and eventually going to get caught out well those positions are something that we'll have to take a, a deeper look into because the map that we are going to play on has already been figured out it's ready let's figure out where we're heading for this one so are those same issues for tsm's defense going to persist or are we going to a different battleground today I hope that they don't go to theme park. I <laughs> Surely really not, hope. Right? Surely not. If you I was even saying the other day that the T and TSM does not stand for theme park, and it's very evident. <laughs> but hasn't Mirage banned a bank every time after losing it twice in a row? You'd yeah, think yeah. TSM don't make the same mistake, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. They're going to take off bank first. DZ has looked incredibly strong on the map. Always sharp. Canadian, even if he's on the knock or the Monty or something like that. <laughs> They're strong and comfortable on that map with the kind of the other default bands coming through. Cafe, Clubhouse, Villa, Oregon all makes sense. Try to get a little bit of variety in here with two inventive and veteran teams. All old maps and Chalet continues that trend. That means we are going to end up on a brand new map and theme park we've talked about is in the pool. Oh no. Two plays for the first couple of weeks and TSM went for border instead. This is perfect for Dark Zero. They perma ban Sky. So there's no shot. They don't just ban Sky again and send us over to theme park. Oh. There it is. Oh. Theme coming through. DZ have not played any of these three maps so far. This will be their first time on a new map. And then yeah, TSM, a couple of losses, both to Oxygen and probably the most embarrassing now mm -hmm. to Mirage. Immediate concern on this. The idea that Dark Zero do have a support staff capable of understanding, especially TSM's tendencies, mm -hmm. not just because they play each other so often, but if you're going to VOD review somebody, you're going to VOD review the world champs and figure out why they were struggling on 
on a map that so far has seen almost no play in the NAL except by a team mm -hmm. called Team Solo Mid. So what are we looking at in this matchup? Does the map choice immediately sway your thinking on this matchup? Yes. <laughs> that is a very simple answer. You agree yeah. with him? I mean, I have to, right? Like, obviously, they've been scrimming, whatever, but we don't have access to that. And looking at the, the data that we have, this is going to be a very tough map for TSM. But, you know, maybe third time's a charm. <laughs> maybe. Don't want to speak too soon, but I will allow the casters to get their word in and tell us what they think about this one. Boys, is the map selection on this one as concerning to you guys as it is to me? Or is this just kind of another day at the office for both these teams? I think the more concerning thing is, why the hell are you hosting? How did you get over there? <laughs> what? Sam, what's going? Through. Don't ask questions. No one needs the answers to. Okay, it's fine. Oh, I mean, okay. <laughs> All right. You know what? Just for you, Jacob, I'll make it easy. I'm going TSM. Okay. John? Uh, it's actually going to be the same for me. I'm not as confident anymore because of the map pick and the reasons you guys were just mentioning. Um, but I feel like this might be the week for TSM to rebound a little bit. I talked to Bolo at one point last week. It wasn't on stream, but he had talked about how the team had, or he had thought the team was mainly struggling in the areas of like communication and stuff like that. And I think that those are pretty easy fixes. And generally, I, I tended to believe what I heard. So I'm going to hope that they were able to run back, take a good look at maybe what was going wrong, and come back strong this week versus a Dark Zero who's still struggling, in my opinion, with some pretty core elements, at least of their attacking side. And I think that's still going to show, even though they've uh, chosen to go into this map. All right, fair play. Vegas Dust Storm notwithstanding, good to have you with us, Mr. Hey. Blue Cast. And now, we'll turn it over. I do agree with something he said, though. The idea that this mm -hmm. is the week the TSM need to turn things around. Because, again, with the way that Exit have been playing, there are several teams now that TSM have to surpass if they want to get to a point where they can actually qualify for a major. So, Jesse, what are we thinking? I mean, I like something John said. He talked about uh, Dark Zero being weak on attack. He's absolutely right. Luckily, they're against the worst defensive team in the league right now. <laughs> so, I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue. I think I like Dark Zero here. Hyper really impressed me last week. Even though they lost that game, I'm going DZ. Yeah, I'll take the same sentiment, just the idea that DZ is a team that can definitely exploit the weaknesses TSM have presented so far. My only question is, are TSM or Dark Zero going to be the slower team, especially when it comes to those pushes? So I'll go with DZ in this case as well. What does the coin say, Connor? Well, I, you know, we talked about it earlier. Yeah. You got the really good support staff on the side of TSM. There's no way they make such a massive mistake three times in a row, right? Uh, on week one, when we saw Oxygen get taken to theme park, that for me was a little bit of a red flag. And I actually got to sit down and talk with Gotcha because he was an old Challenger League guy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, what was the thought process here? And it was really more of a like reactive kind of mindset for the side of TSM that, hey, they're going to come in, they're going to attack the historically strong maps of Oxygen and go to a map that they also feel comfortable. They feel comfortable on theme park for a reason. There's no way that they let it go through three times. There's no way that Gotcha Data and Pojo Man left that 50-50 decider up as Skyscraper in this map of theme park, knowing that it wouldn't go to theme. That's or a good point, but I asked what the coin thought. <laughs> I, I am the coin now. I mean, okay, fair. So what does the coin say? The coin says TSM. The coin went with TSM. Yes. And you were nope. just trying to provide rationale uh -huh. for the inanimate object. Yes. Or went DZ, actually. Take a look at the screen. It went DZ. Nope, it's, it's TSM. I it went no. Dark Zero. I am the coin. That's not what that says. You can go, you can go TSM, but the coin... Do we need to bring another uh, analyst in on this? Flipped. Like we, need, we, we need to let someone else, like, be his voice. Already, this doesn't seem like it's working. <laughs> Are you okay? Like, 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 do you need my glasses? Uh, maybe. Just maybe. maybe. But... I can give you something. I, I would like my own little section down here. Can you give me that? You will not. <laughs> you are being denied Good and question. will not ask happen. They can throw that up in a second. But instead of throwing him up, we will throw it right over to our casters to get this game underway. It'll be Dark Zero, TSM, Blue and Stokes. Have fun, lads. All right, thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, what a pleasure it is to be back once again for another riveting week of matches here at the NAL. I've got quite a good one in front of us here, and there's a lot to talk about, starting with the things that we were just mentioning when it came to us for predictions here. Dark Zero, have they made those improvements to their attacking side? And has TSM taken a better look at their theme park? Well, we would hope so, given that this is going to be the third or fourth time they've picked into it now, with all the recent ones being losses. Is this the week for you, Sam, where we're going to see TSM rebound, or are things still looking a little bleak for them at this point for you? You know, I, I think that we've reached critical mass. I think that's what it is for me. It's make or break time for TSM, especially for stage one. If they don't get a grip now, I don't know if they'll get a grip ever to where they're going to be able to actually compete with our top three teams or top four teams. Uh, so I'd really, really like to see them bounce back today. And I think this is an opportunity to do it. They have a lot of history up against Dark Zero. Not only that, but quite a few of these players uh, have played up against Canadian time and time again. So they know how the system works. They know what they're up against. It should be quite interesting, especially given the circumstances of what more 
really what both of these teams are going through right now. Yeah, absolutely the case. As for Dark Zero, they haven't had, you know, the worst run of things here in the first couple weeks of play. It's been a little bit mixed, but I would say the results and the kind of play we're getting out of this team is still fairly solid across the board here, with the attack being the big asterisk. We saw it in quite a few of their matches, and I personally, on their second day's matchup last week, didn't notice a massive improvement in this department, is just things being very slow when it comes to, like, their roam clear and whatnot, getting that initial bit of map control they use as a staging ground to springboard the rest of their attacks off of. Things like that were just not really happening, especially on their Villa game last week. So I'm going to hope for an improvement in that department. And if that's the case, things will probably look pretty good. Ooh. Speaking of things that look good, let's head over here to the TSM side as we got a new hairstyle, looks like, for Geo. A little dirty blonde hair. I honestly mm. like it a lot, especially with the, the, like, the earrings and the chain. It's looking good, Geo. It's looking good, man. That was, uh, my, uh, that was my natural look when I was seven. Believe it or not, my hair used to Oh, earrings right. at all? No, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? What happened? You were you were like uh, cold as ice at seven. I had to get serious, you know. <laughs> Working esports, put on a suit and tie. Ah, uh, corporations yeah. got yeah. to you. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, it happens to all of us. But hopefully for TSM, it's a big change of the day. It's like the change of hair here for Geo. Uh, you know, they looked fantastic at SI, and I think they brought a lot of spice uh, to that land, especially with some of the more aggressive tendencies that they tended to have with the stylistic choices of Merc in his IG lane. Uh, I'm hoping that we get more of that here today. I think there's going to be some opportunities for them to abuse the setup, especially for Dark Zero on their defensive setups, uh, where TSM will be able to try and manipulate that in a certain sense. I think that TSM is going to have a lot more room to play around with the early game in general for the reasons I was talking about before with Dark Zero's own issues and clearing some of that out, but just the uh, proficiency we've tended to see in the past out of TSM's own roam game. I mean, we're going to the theme park after all. You've got pretty much unlimited room for those types of players in that role to maneuver around the map, even just looking at, like, the dragon side. You've got that whole... <laughs> That's not a player. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello, <laughs> camera. <laughs> Double camera. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you've got that whole, like, you know, the cash room extending all the way back into office, even, like, going to the other side on initiation room. That first, like, 30, 40 seconds because you've got like that whole playground of control upstairs, not just one part of the map, right? We haven't yeah. talked about like cafe and arcade side either, where you have arguably just as much room to play around. So hopefully TSM is going to be able to use the very long leash that I think DZ is going to give them to try and control the early game and a lot of the defensive side of, or a lot of the defensive rounds, and that will make it a fairly easy task, I would assume, for them to close out. That is, of course, assuming that DZ has not made the improvements that I'm expecting them to have made going into today's match. Yeah, I'm excited to see Dark Zero, especially on this match, uh, especially going up against TSM. I think it's going to be interesting to to see how Canadian wants to use his more aggressive tools that he has in this team uh, to try and take the fight to TSM because that's going to be a lot of the decision making in this for both of these teams. Uh, you know, I think a lot of this is going to go down uh, to what is happening on the offensive side, but we'll just have to see. You know, for the defensive setup for Theme Park, things can get pretty murky, especially when it comes to so, uh, some more of these like extended roams and the ways that you can make angles around the map, especially on that top floor. Things get very, very strange when you start opening two, three walls and you're staring at somebody by, you know, <laughs> 40 meters away in a completely different room that they didn't even know that you were in. You know, things get quite, quite weird. So uh, it's going to be fun. We'll, we'll have to see how it goes. But hopefully the pep talk from TSM can help them persevere and push through this. I'm just waiting on a few more players to jump into the server. Then we should be good to go. But either way, TSM making those last preparations, giving their teammates that last boost of confidence. And they know they need it here. As this has not been the best showing for TSM. That kind of goes without saying. But yeah, hasn't been the best run here inside of the first few weeks of the NAL after class claiming the world championship just a few weeks prior. So this team is in a very strange spot, a spot that really I don't think many players at home or even many players inside of our pro division are really going to be able to relate to. So it's a tough time this team is going through as they look to rebound and still try to end up inside of the top four so that they can earn a spot moving into the next major. Yeah, you know, and, and the more and more that we delve into this, uh, especially for this stage in particular, both of these teams obviously struggling like what we've been talking about, and obviously that's the culmination of what we're going to see today. Day. But looking through their stats and you know trying to get a deeper understanding of where both of them sit, you can see a massive change uh, from not only SI but also Stage Three and what these teams were able to do. I mean, even looking at the leaderboards that are on CGG, if you guys want to go look at those yourself, uh, there's not very many players from either one of these teams on this. I mean, we have achieved. He's plus four right now in entry, is uh, the fifth best entry in all of the NAL at the current moment. But past that, I mean, you have NJR with two clutches as well as six plants. Out of Eclipse, uh, he's well one under the highest, which is currently tied through uh, by three people. So for both of these teams, it's just kind of a telltale sign that there isn't really much going on when it comes to their gunfights and more of like the DM style that we've seen from a lot of teams nowadays. I, I I would see say to an extent that the consistency 
seems like it's there for DZ, but it doesn't necessarily seem like, at least on the attacking rounds, that they can get to a point in the round where they can really show that in a lot of circumstances. That's maybe making the stats, at least for that side, look a little bit worse than it potentially uh, actually is. But I'm going to hope, once again, that that is an area where we start to see improvement for this team. For me, personally, looking at TSM, this is definitely the team that seems to have more overall issues right now they need to look at. But judging for the interview I had with Bolo about a week ago now, it seems like they have a pretty good handle on those and are working on them. So it's all just a matter of whether they have the right solutions to curtail some of those problems in mind and ready to deploy here for this theme park game. It should be getting started soon, folks, because we got all 10 players in the server now, so it shouldn't be too much of an additional delay. I think we're just waiting on one more player to come back from a break or something. So as soon as that is the case, we should be able to hit that S button, get started with the game, and get ourselves live with our second match. Well, the good news is, is that I, I packed the whole backpack this time, John. I'm, I'm ready. I got the stat <laughs> you got lines. The, you, got the, you got everything. They should just give me the analyst role. I mean, I've got the <laughs> highest percentage anyways. We'll just, I mean, We'll just have you sprint over to the other yeah, desk. I could be the host. I could be the analyst. Anyways, getting to the point. Uh, So for TSM, we got to talk about Bolo, man. Bolo has not been having a good stage. At the current moment, he's at a .76. He's negative 11 for his KD spread. Words I never thought I was going to be saying, especially about Jason Doty. But at the current moment, things are not going too hot. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Stokes, maybe he changed some things up. Maybe TSM is looking at possibly switching some operators around or something like that. No, that's not it at yeah, all. He's playing yet. Finca and Wamai. That is right up Bolo's alley. It's just that he's been shut down time and time again. And that makes things extremely difficult for TSM, especially when you're only positive positive person on the whole team is your IGL Merc. Uh, currently at a plus 12. He also, I believe, has the best KPR as well on his team. Yes, he does at a 1.0. So, you know, it's just it's very, very awkward for them at the current moment because they're really not getting help from the areas that they're so used to having. Yeah, it's making a strange situation too with Merc managing to kind of be the front fragger in a lot of these scenarios, I would imagine. And where the front he's, IGL. You yeah, gotta remember that. Yeah, he's well, making all that was, these comms. That was the point I was leaning into is it's probably a little difficult for him to focus on that duty of actually leading the team when he's having to focus a bit too much on picking up the slack in the fragging department as well, so that's going to distract him a little bit. This is an area I've talked about even outside of Siege and other games, too. This is a conversation topic that comes up. It's like, do you really want that star player on your team to fulfill that role, where they also have to be the leader, and they may otherwise become distracted in certain situations? And TSM took it, and up until this start of this stage, it's been working fairly well for them, but it seems like it may be potentially causing some traction issues now that they've come back to the NAL, and other teams, the domestic routes seem to have uh, figured it out. Yeah, I, I mean, as of right now, it's just it's just very strange. Uh, you know, looking looking at the situation with TSM, I definitely think that there's obviously some things that they can do to bring themselves back into it. It's really down to just uh, the team coordination and the way that they can try and promote Bolo and Chala to just be more beneficial to them. Uh, we'll have to see if that happens today. But as of right now, I really, really do agree with you, especially looking over at, uh, you know, Merck's operators and everything else that he's been playing this stage. I mean, he's been playing Zofia and Jaeger. He's taking so many many fights. There's so much to focus on in that position, and it could have finally caught up with them. It but, almost, I mean, what it a time for it to catch up. It almost up. seems like he's trying to die early. Yeah. <laughs> to an extent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it almost does. But, I mean, I mean, the strange thing is, is, like, if this was the time that TSM is now going to burn out, what a time to do it. I mean, you go to SI, you lift a hammer in the very next stage, you're like, ah, guys, uh, it's not cutting it. Like, ran out of gas in the middle of the desert, guys. Don't really know what you want me to do there. But we are in the bands, of course, folks, so we're taking a look at that oh. now. We're going to see a Maverick ban as our final attacker getting knocked down. That's falling behind a Thatcher, which is going to make things quite interesting for the defensive side as it might force the hand of either Dark Zero or TSM, depending on what the choice is going to be from DZ, which we'll be seeing in just a second here. And it is not going to necessarily correspond to that first or second attacker ban, so now TSM have a choice to make. Uh, it's got to be a ban up against Bolo. That's what it is. Nah, the, the one might come <laughs> in. Uh, well, as of right now, Things are pretty decently split in between uh, offense and defense. Samir is going to come through. That one's to be expected on basically every map that we play. So she's not going to be here for the ride through theme park. But it's going to make things quite complicated when it comes to the offense. You don't have Thatcher. You don't have Maverick. Uh, the big thing to talk about here is nades. We are going to have to talk about frag grenades quite a lot when it comes to this offensive side. And, well, Dark Zero seem to know exactly what's going on in that category is we're going to stack six very quickly. The reason that that's happening, by the way, is because we don't have Thatcher. We also don't have Maverick. You've got to get these walls open somehow. The easiest way happens to be explosive. 
Exclusives. Yeah, the good news here on Theme Park is there is a lot of the key walls are going to have that little bit of soft paneling on top of them, even when you deploy the reinforced wall itself. And that is what these attackers are going to use to get through quite a few of them, is there's no real other method to do that if the defenders bring any form of mitigation, which they do have slightly from Achieve's POV there. He's going to bring those mute jammers. We may see on other sites, though, more than likely not this one, but maybe downstairs in Throne or Makade or something like that being brought to the tables. That utility is going to be a lot harder for Dark Zero to knock out since they will only be limited to nades. So if TSM has counters themselves to set that up, they can very easily lock down the core site and play out the round mainly on the timer. Let's see, though, how Dark Zero is going to approach this first attack upstairs as TSM have chosen this for their first battleground. Pretty interesting choice, as usually we see a lot of teams go to Throne, which is obviously the room with the massive chair in it yep. uh, downstairs. So, uh, But obviously we're going to bunk daycare instead to start us off. Could just be trying to throw Dark Zero for a loop, but they seem to be on their stuff. Eclipse already got some drones inside of Drug. He'll be able to discover a few TSM members around this area, but they're holding quite a bit of map control. Not only that, but they've also made some of those awkward angles that we were talking about in the pregame lobby, especially up around the office area. Things are going to go fairly slow oh. here for a moment as we've got a bit of a potential awkward exchange. Softwall blocking the POVs of each other right now, so they're not going to notice each other. And as well, that player from Dark Sea is actually going to retreat outside of the building from Barrels, so that duel will not come to pass as that player just works themselves up onto the roof, I believe, instead. And this Rome presence from TSM stays alive and well inside of the throne room. A few other players, of course, messing around mainly in Lab. We can see at least one on that arcade balcony, too. So lots of things for Dark Zero to try and deal with here before they can even think about assaulting the second floor. Well, Dark Zero already have drawn drug control to continue to drone things out and try and clear out this bottom floor. Make sure none of these roamers can try and punish them. They really have to be worried about thrown and specifically split at the current moment as Achieved holds an angle. Uh, this is usually something that's going to get some care from the offense. It's a common spot for a lot of roamers to try and sit just because you have so many options to try and leave as well as it's quite congested to try and get in. So pretty easy gunfights either way you slice it. Now for Canadian though, lined up outside Bolo literally centimeters off of the man's skull but can't land the shot. Well, continuing to patiently wait for any potential opportunity of frags that could come, excuse me, that could come his way if Dark Zero decide to hop in through that window inside of Arcade, but not going to see that come to pass just yet here. Still a little over halfway, or a little under, I should say, half of the round to go. And Dark Zero are certainly going to use that time, as we know them to be a team that wants to play these types of situations as slowly as possible. This also takes us into the realm where we have to worry about that early round clearance that we were talking about in the pregame here. They have not really pulled off much so far here. At the moment, just hoping on someone from the side of TSM over swinging like Bolo, but that's not going to happen. Oh! oh! Bolo nearly sneaks out a double, but instead, the shots come the other way, and Achieve was just not ready to save his teammate there. He will get the exchange, which puts TSM back in control. On top of that initial pick they got before this fight even began, and as you can see, NJR and Eclipse also pretty heavily Beautiful. injured. NJR is not going to be able to get away with anything against Chala, as now only two remain for Dark Zero. 35 seconds to play it out in the 2v4 as well as Eclipse and Canadian have to be the heroes here to save the round. Flash is going in quickly to try and take out Geo's position, but he's ready for it. Drops the case onto the ground, leaving DZ with only one alive. It's Eclipse versus the world, and he's not ready for the challenge. He goes down, and TSM claim round one. What an awkward round there for Dark Zero. I, I really don't understand the circumstances that we just had, only because Dark Zero seemingly were unaware that Achieved even existed inside of yeah. the room at all. And the, the problem, well, the reason that I have a problem, rather, with this is the fact that we just spent two minutes sitting outside droning, and you don't know where any of the TSM members are. How is that possible? That shouldn't, that should never happen. And then the choice from Dark Zero is rush up arcade stairs, I don't know, man. There wasn't like any movement on the TSM side either. It wasn't like people no. were like changing up positions a lot Nothing. from what I could see either. Nothing at all. And especially for Dark Zero, you took drug control. Why are you not checking the rooms next to you? It's very, very awkward for them in that sense. Uh, I guess they were more than likely just willing to rest on their flank drones and just see what happens. But that angle is not covered by a flank drone. You know, you can just shoot anybody on the stairwell from split. So it just made things super, super awkward for DZ. Hopefully they can try and shift gears here and get themselves out of it. It looks like they're trying to do something here. Look at this attacker repick. Yeah. We got Finca, Osa, Habana, and Capital now along for the ride. Mostly the Osa is what I would love to talk about. Yeah, we're going to see a big swap out here, and the Osa is going to make it a lot easier for Dark Zero to potentially directly contest their push against TSM's hold here. 
which was part of the problem in the last round. Dark Seer didn't seem to have any right of initiation to take out that first player or two on TSM and actually get them into these more hot spots inside of the building. So maybe they're hoping the contribution of the OSA will enable that on top of the utility that's going to come in primarily from Canadian there by bringing the Capital into the fold here. Those micro smokes along with the incendiaries could push the more dangerous members of TSM's hold a little bit further back or just out of the situation entirely. And it's quite good for a site like this. It'd be even better if it was thrown, though, just because of the congestion that happens inside of that site. A lot of those incendiary bolts would end up getting quite a bit of damage or even taking somebody out if it ends up working out that way. Oh, looks like we are indeed going to have a change up here. This is the exact same position that Bolo has been playing for TSM when it comes to their theme park, but doesn't usually have the angles down low to try and contest the player hopping into tellers. So Bolo will continue to hold on to this. We'll see how long Dark Zero will take to actually enter the building. Hyper's taking quite a bit of damage, so he's going to be waiting on these adrenal surges to cool down and try and use these before his next entry. It's going to require him to practically use all of them to even try and get back to his max HP. And Jarrah's still waiting for a potential opener here. Achieved a bit of a dangerous cross, and he doesn't fully consider the possibility that Eclipse would have been watching it. So he picks up the first kill. Dark Zero finally gaining a lead here by waiting it out and catching a member of TSM, making a mistake. That's going to give them the 5v4 that they were looking for the last round, but never got. And now that they've been given this opportunity, let's see how they try to leverage it into an actual sight take, since they can swing in over here towards control and cast without too many more worries. And Bolo's going to slowly pull things back, but this is also going to make things quite difficult for TSM. At the current moment, yes, you have this forward attack coming in from the cash side, but you also have to potentially worry about somebody trying to push in through Cafe late. There's still plenty of time for somebody to rotate all the way across and get a good flank going on this team. And with these now bastions set up for DZ, it's made things quite problematic. TSM don't really necessarily have the means to get rid of these. Bolo has a singular impact, so he'll be able to destroy one, but you have to pick and choose which angle you want to worry about. X Kyro is going to be opening them up fairly soon. We're going to see Toxic Babes come out as a response to that. So won't do much about the hard breach, obviously. Panba will continue to open up angles. But you have to note, of course, Dark Zero getting very low on time. This is a build up towards an all in execute for this team. They have one real attempt to swing all five of their players into the site and hopefully leverage the player advantage they have into a winning round. But if they have to peel back or re attempt it, more than likely TSN will be able to hold the line again. And we're going to see this all come to bear in just a second. The nades out. It doesn't even land really on any member of these as everyone stays at nearly full health. Another kill is found from Dark Zero as well, bringing TSM's count to two, but Merc starts the response. He can only get one, though, before going down himself, and Eclipse will chain one more together. That's the end of it, though, as we do see the traded round picked up by DZ and a 1-1 scoreline attained. I mean, talk about walking into the execution room with a smile on your face, TSM. I mean, challenge after challenge after challenge from these guys, especially after Achieve got taken down in such a silly way. Uh, I mean, he was worried about the hatch, but he even checked it. Yeah, like, uh, like yeah, he just didn't check it enough. Exactly. Like that that angle's so unbelievably tight. And you know, with a TTT, uh, TTT, a TTK time that's so unbelievably low, it just makes things like that extremely hard. Uh, you're really not going to be able to try and sneak one past Eclipse there. So quite unfortunate for TSM, but I'm assuming that they're going to dial it back because just like you guys at home and us sitting here on this desk, we have all noticed how slow Dark Zero are moving. Yeah, and TSM, interestingly enough, too, as we take a look at their third site choice, now they are avoiding Throne like the plague for some interesting reason here. This is normally the go-to site for most defensive teams. TSM seemingly is disagreeing to a pretty big extent here, so we're going to see them go to Lab instead of that one for their third and possibly final site choice. And once again, we've got a lot of repicks for DZ as well. It's got to be part, uh, or due in part at least, to the Wamai ban. You don't have nearly as much True. utility to try and play in sight, and with, a, with Throne Room, and like we were talking about before, it's just like one condensed tube and anything especially with the lineups that we have right now with the Mav and Thatcher ban everybody's bringing frag grenades so to not have the Wamai there and only have Jaeger which is a super easy burn I mean you can bring a Rooney too but the gates stay yeah, down like, for so yeah. very long it's just not really worth to try and go there and contest the offense when they don't actually have to directly contest you they can just nade out your positions it's not really like any like crazy powerful spots for those gates too except for like the immediate doorways so they would have fairly... yeah, like, what are you going to do put it on the yeah. breach and then like play one for split <laughs> you'd like, have, you'd have, like you'd have like fairly limited impact with an Aruni on that site so it makes perfect sense 
It, you know, that's I will say this, though. That's the one thing that I do really, really love about Rainbow Six is that we can have little conversations even about stuff like that. It's just like one little piece of utility in the entire sea of this game. Mm. It, it's so crazy that you're able to, you know, discuss like that in a competitive FPS like this. But either way, Dark Zero are back to the basics, John. We're taking some time. We're droning things out. Yeah, they've got to take care of this extended game once again, so it's going to oh? take them some time to build up the confidence for that. I say that, but Piper <laughs> swings in wildly, gets the opener versus... Versus Bolo. What just happened? The Chief slaps him right down. I'm pretty sure that all took place through that yellow hall hatch as well. So a pretty contained fight at the end of the day. Dark Zero not really going to be able to chain that into anything else. Although it looks like they're certainly trying over here towards Cafe side. But at the moment, it's pretty calm on the battlefield. It just appears as though one toxic babe was baited out by the defense to respond to it. A lot of Russian red dots on uh, the squad as well. I don't know if you have a favorite I think, one. I think, that's the one I, is, I think that's the one I've been putting on my games, too. The Russian red dot is really, really good. I've also been... Uh, well, I, I, I'm using... I don't oh, know that's the Russian reflex, by the way. The Russian yeah, yeah, that's the, the Russian red dot's like the fat one on the bottom, right? Yeah, yeah it, looks like, it looks like the Cobra site from uh, Battlefield. That's not ringing a bell for me. Uh, well, I, you know, I tried, guys. I tried. <laughs> that's Either way, the wrong though, genre. back to things that actually matter, like the game and the fact that Dark Zero have taken control of this top floor. I mean, things are looking quite solid for them right now. NJR's got a lot of work ahead of him, but he's mostly just using this verticality to see if they can possibly find somebody like Achieved or Geo currently inside of Throne. But Bad News Bears, none of that verticality actually works for Throne. It only works for Armory. So, and you can't even try and contest him if he goes split. This is why it's such a hot spot for a lot of roamers, because Geo can just sit here, rest, and waste a lot of Dark Zero's time. Geo doing some great work here, keeping the numbers even. He will have to start working his way back, but the good news is that connector is just to the right of Pambazo current point of view. Panzo, gotta be careful though, as he finds the lineup against Chala. Is he ready for the immediate exchange? Geo actually gets one over by the it's stairs, the apparently takes down Eclipse. That's the case going down with it. Panba might need to be the hero to save the day here, but Geo's now the last one alive, and Panba just cleans up shop all on his own. Kill after kill, frag after frag, it all goes his way as DZ takes the lead away from TSM on round three. Oh man, the the timing on that last kill there was just terrible for Geo. The poor guy. I, I'm surprised that he didn't get the audio cue for the Banshee there at the very last second, but he had a very real opportunity to win out that situation. A one versus two, you know where the case is. I, I mean, honestly, he might not have known that the case was there, to be completely honest with you. You don't have points, obviously, when you are playing competitive Siege, uh, and he shot him through that little hole that they had at the back of Armory, so maybe he just didn't see the case drop, uh, and that's the, way, uh, the reason that he kind of dedicated himself in the way that he did. But either way, Dark Zero will pull ahead with this grueling strategy that we've seen so far through three rounds. Another interesting repick coming in, and it's recorded a few of their operators. We're going to focus, or we were going to focus, I should say, on Pan Mazoo's pick. That is, of course, until it went away. We had Naruni soft lock there for a second, but he's gone away from that over towards the sledge. So much higher emphasis on soft reach overall coming into the fold, and plenty of reason for that, especially on the top down perspective here. When we look at the site we've gone back to, it is going to be upstairs here inside of the dorms once again. So quite a work to, quite a bit of work to do inside of that department and in utility mitigation we're also going to see canadians switch over once again to another operator as well as explosive drones potentially going to help out in clearing things for the early round here all right well got some extra burn along for the ride but don't necessarily need it mostly due to what we were talking about previously with all my band coming through dark zero more than likely will take their time on this clear yet again but they're back to where they were originally and i believe round one or two Drug take here, and we'll start droning things out. Not only that, but they've already gotten thrown as well, and I believe that they've shoved, I think, achieved, yes indeed, all the way back into maintenance. This is gonna make things quite awkward here. Only access to actually get upstairs is gonna be on Dragon Stairs, and Pambazoo, obviously very aware of the situation. Canadian droning him out, he'll get droned again. Achieved gets the drone, but now they know exactly where he is. That's why Geo's rotated over to the top of Dragon, and somebody's on that default cam right there, because they're all trying to help Achieve stay alive. Geo continuing to wait this one out here. Time bleeding away in Dark Zero. Not going to be accomplishing much while this stalemate sustains itself. That's a bit of a double-edged sword here. Dark Zero, they're very, very aware of how to handle these situations. This shouldn't be scaring them all that much, knowing they've got someone potentially ready to stab them in the back if they're a little bit too zealous on their attack here. But 
for the time being, it's not going to be too much of a concern. Both teams seem to have the situation semi-contained to the back halls here. The Arc Zero will need to be careful, though, if they want to keep it that way, as obviously their execute will be pretty heavily damaged by having to have this constant flank watch, keeping an eye on that back maintenance hallway as well as the player upstairs. It does seem as though Geo's going to rotate away from this position, though, since not a whole lot's happening. He'll need to be kind of lean towards the site as Dark Zero also inch closer towards their execute position. So he's going to fall back towards that area in initiation and make sure he maintains a relatively close position to the site while the rest of DZ begin clearing things out inside of Cafe. Yeah, shout out to Pambazoo's aiming finger, by the way. That thing has got to be stressed, just standing <laughs> and thrown and staring at the door. Yeah, dude, he's been staring at the same angle for practically a minute and a half. It's very, very hard for them right now, but a fantastic call from TSM. They've wasted so much time. And the big difference to the other two rounds that we saw Dark Zero get, they don't have any kills. So now for TSM, they're going to have their full manpower to try and fight against DZ in these dying moments. Oh, he's going to get a little bit of in. Oh, <laughs> what a shot. The perfect paint on the Yokai drone, following it up with the pre fire as soon as the player re peeks. Amazing stuff coming out from Bolo. That's his first kill of the game, too. It's going to unfortunately oh. domino effect from this point forward. Bolo gets his oh, second he one. Him. He downs a third player on the stairs, and Chala is going to finish him off on top of the other kill he already got. It's down to just Eclipse now with the 1v4. He's at a hope in this situation. Only 15 seconds left as well. This should be an easy second round for TSM, and there it is! Beautifully done from TSM. The communication, the call to waste time over on maintenance, all capped off by a beautiful shot from Bolo. And if he doesn't get another kill the entire game, I won't even be mad. That was so unbelievably gorgeous. Fantastic from TSM to not only play that out the way that they did, but to identify in the first place that they're able to waste Dark Zero's time like that. Immediately chaining it into that second one as well. Great stuff from Bolo picking up a huge amount of slack there inside of the round for TSM and allowing them to now equalize the equation. And finally, after four rounds straight of not going to it, TSM do lock in their first choice here towards the throne room, the site that we've been waiting four rounds to see. Let's see how exactly TSM is going to utilize Because keep in mind, they do have that semi-advantage of having the Cade in here with no immediate counter towards it away from nades. Hmm, very interesting. So, uh, can we do me a huge favor? Uh, can we look at this east wall here, folks? Uh, that would be fantastic. The one that's reinforced with the mute jammer over here. Uh, if not, it's perfectly fine. I'll give you the quick explanation, the skinny of it. Uh, so, if you reinforce panels and you, you put them backwards like they are right now, that lip that's on that backside over inside of maintenance, it makes nades more difficult to throw yep. because it, it adds just a little bit of height on that side and it's a lot easier to botch your nades that way. So, very, very smart strat here from TSM. I can do you guys one better. It's not in the game anymore, but it was quite fun back in the day. Uh, if you had a three-panel wall like Church on Clubhouse and you put the panels back and forth all the way down so they'd be like one facing out, one facing in, one facing out, right? Thermite couldn't put them on two panels. He can only put them on one panel. Oh, so like missile line. Yes, yeah, so it would straight up break his utility to where he could only put it on a singular panel. It was the funniest thing ever. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of little intricate things that uh, used to happen with reinforcements and still today, especially with the nades. So already 30 seconds into our fifth round of play here. Once again, expected to be a little bit of a slow follow-up. I say that, but Bolo is out to party right now over here inside of the cash hallway. Already been forced back to the initiation and off his cross, oh. and he's nearly going to get caught from that position. Hyper seemed yeah, to have him feet. dead to rights, but yep, indeed, he's going to go right for the scan here. Run for the hills, Bolo. <laughs> they got your feet. Bolo's not going to be able to stick around as a result of that. He's having a high tilt immediately back to site. The good news is he doesn't have to go, doesn't have to go that far. He does have some support on the back end of the building here where he can rely on Geo and a few other members to make sure he does not get shot in the back here and can still hold the line against the rest of the clear from DZ. Okay, well, the good news for TSM in this strategy is that they did bring Kaid, so split hatch is sealed, unless a frag grenade rolls its way on in there. As for Dark Zero's current situation, they've lost a couple of drones, but not too big of a deal. Still have over half, and it's about halfway through the round, so I'd say they're doing a pretty bang-up job, especially with Dokabi calls already coming in. Cheed will be get, uh, get called here. Nitro Cell out, and it'll clean oh, that one. frag. Geo will take down Canadian as well. It's a three versus four. Make it a, oh my god, hyper slap! achieved right out of bunk. I was insane, but now it's a three versus three. TSM, they have an opportunity to shut this down, but if Hyper continues to shoot like this, I really don't know what else they can really do. Yeah, Hyper with a round-changing kill right there. May have very well saved DZ's life inside of this one and potentially allowed them to take the lead here. Potential lead at the halftime, too, if they can carry it through. Keep in mind how close this is right now, a 2-2 with the potential for a 3-2 lead if DZ closed this one out. But it is still only even, and you have to keep in mind those low HPs on the remaining 
remaining members of Dark Zero. They're going to get one more little boost onto Hyper here since they have that remaining Adrenal Surge. It'll probably get used pretty quickly to be able to boost Hyper's HP up as high as possible, seeing as he's the big fragger on the field right now. But they do want to dump the rest of this utility beforehand. An aid going in, seeing if they can open up a potential deeper in the site to deal some damage. They'll do just a little bit to Merc. He'll knock off about 10 to 20 HP. Oh, oh no, for Geo, though, he gets a bit too curious, leaning back in from the Arsenal. He goes down. Merc tries to play that same position, but a bit more creatively on the angle. It's oh, going to be no! Chala that can only get one. The responses from DZ are too quick and too strong. So it falls to Merc, who's already heavily injured for the previous fight, but he nearly got it anyway. Gets one, but does get exchanged out. And DZ just barely maintained their position to clutch that round out. This is like the most action-packed game where 90% of the time nothing's happening that I've watched in my life. This is so crazy. I mean, there's a lot of footsies back and forth in between these two teams. It's like, oh, okay, well, I'm going to kind of take this map control. You're going to let me do that? Okay, I'm going to drone a little bit further now. <laughs> oh, you're running away? All right, well, I guess I'll see you at 40 seconds left, man. You, you have a good time. And eventually, we get down to these moments where both of these teams are able to make these insane plays. Last round, we had Bolo popping off. This round, we have Hyper with some disgusting mechanics. I mean, what else could you really want, especially when it comes to a theme park, when this map, especially on the offensive side, plays so strangely? Both teams just have a lot of respect for each other, it seems, especially once again. I know I've been talking to death about it throughout this game, but inside of that early round portion here, where neither one really wants to be the first one to take a fight, unless the other team steps their bounds way too far to the point where that fight needs to be taken. So either way, as a result of that, it's leaving these very, very stalemated situations alive up until the bitter end of most of these rounds and creating a very, very chaotic folding of it. I can say that again, my friend. It, it has been oh. a whirlwind for sure. Oh, we yes. Get the lock in this yes, time. Yes, indeed. I've, I've, since we've had this, you know, implemented, I've just made a conscious decision to not look at the operator lineup until it's locked in and I look over. Uh, but now, yes, indeed, my friend, not only is it Pambazoo, but it's Pambazoo uh, on a woman with a Gara hook. So this should be pretty interesting here to see if he can possibly fly in and disrupt a lot of TSM's process. Thankfully, I can say that now because Disrupt isn't a team. That's very true, yeah. I used to not be able to say that because Astralis was Disrupt, and I was like, oh, that's just cringe. <laughs> so Pam is going to look for an entry what? point, what? and uh, uh. we're going to look for the color <laughs> and see if we can find some of that. Ah, well, Mitch. Uh, <laughs> as, <laughs> yes, we've gotten to the classic casting scene now. We're going <laughs> to well keep going. Yeah, we're, we're casting a bot. I can have some fun. <laughs> so... Hyper. No, I can't do it. I'm gonna crack myself. <laughs> yeah, don't 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 stress yourself out there, John. <laughs> we got some smokes it's coming in effort. here for Hyper. And yes indeed, it is it is a little bit too much. Sometimes I wish that we still talked like that. I, I think it I think it'd be fun. But either way, we're gonna be able to get rid of the uh, deployable shield here. Not too too much going on. They'll be able to get rid of a camera. We're flipping back and forth and I think we're gonna be in third person for the remainder of this one, ladies and gents. Yep. So Oh, no, we got a we, fix. We got a fix. Shout out the Observer. Thank you so much, Ty. We really appreciate Ace it. Tech team. They're on top of that. So Chala, ready to hold on to things here at top of the arcade. And he's potentially going to have some support from Bolo, but Bolo's going to be a little curious of the potential swings coming from the other direction, too. So both players are a little bit separated from each other. There is that potential for that tag team play, though, that we have seen in a few previous rounds. It has allowed for TSM to chain these into winning rounds, but DZ also just as strong on their ability to trade these back out of flash thrown, but it goes right into the face of Hyper. So a little bit of a misplay there to start this out. The good news is it does blind Bolo out, and it's going to leave him vulnerable to this push from Panba. That on top of Canadian's initial kill is leaving DZ in a strong position here at a 5v3 with very little damage traded onto any member of the attacking roster right now, but Hyper seems to have lost the plot a little bit. Chala comes running out of the site and picks up the first trade against Hyper with the rest of the team still being stuck over towards Top Yellow Stairs and Cafe. I've been loving this FMG9 pickup for a lot of teams on the smoke. It makes it to where you can contest things so easily. Big gunfight there for Achieve. Still making a 2v2, making a 2 versus 1. You're going to have to do even more, but it's not Achieved anymore as he gets taken down. It's going to be Merc. No Nitro Cell, though. Won't be able to try and counter this out, but luckily enough, Yes, indeed. Bon chassis downstairs inside of Drug. You really wouldn't have thought so with TSM playing so stoic upstairs, really trying to hold on to that verticality. But now they've given Merc an opportunity. SMG 11 in hand, not trusting the M590. Frag grenades for NJR, but does he choose correctly? He does indeed. <laughs> Bounces it off the back wall. It'll blow up Merc, and they'll take the round. Yeah, fish in a barrel, unfortunately, for Merc. Not much he can do about that situation, but tries to set himself up as well as he could for success. But once again, 
man, man, these incredibly chaotic, this time a mid-round fight transpiring between both teams where neither one can seemingly get a handle. Here we go, we're gonna have it on replay. Just frags going all over the place. Another nice one time, I think, coming from Achieve that time as well there. But a few of those coming out from TSM, but not enough, unfortunately, because of the fact that Dark Zero got the clean entry, I think it was Canadian that picked that up at the very beginning of the round. That is what allowed them to basically trade their way towards a win because they had that extra player at the end of it in the 2v1. Now, for our TSM fans at home, I don't want you to worry too, too much about this current score line because theme park's been a little strange this stage. Uh, let me explain it to you really quickly. The defensive win rate right now for theme park overall is 35%. That is not something, not yeah, not something that I thought was going to be happening, especially after the circumstances that we had the last time that this map was in the map pool, where it was like, I believe, 50 to 60 percent uh, defensive win rate. But a lot of these teams have figured things out and made it a lot easier to clear. This is also due in part to just how strong the offense is at the current moment with the LMG meta and just how much damage the offense can do to a lot of these utility pieces. Not only the utility pieces, but just players in general. A lot of these guns hit super, super hard, and the defense doesn't necessarily have something to fight back. I would argue repick. It's a lot of strength for this map, too, just because of the kind of open-ended nature of the map and like the early phases of rounds. You've got a lot more room to be creative with the repick and potentially go for these like kind of wacky executes in order to get initial map control. Kind of like we saw with the uh, with the Aruni, or not the Aruni, excuse me, the, uh, the Gara Hook operator right there trying to work, in, work their way in from the side steps. Didn't even end up using the ability, just kind of snuck in with it there, but it worked out pretty well for Dark Zero to uh, shut down that extended play at the top of Yellow Stairs. Yes, indeed. And, and no worries. That's why I called her the Gara Hook earlier, because for some Amaru. reason, Amaru. Yeah, uh, for some reason, she always defaults to Aruni in my head as well, but it's so. mostly because we literally never see her on broadcast. <laughs> so, but uh, I mean, fortunately enough, we got to see a little bit of action today, and Hyper might actually see some action here momentarily. Have TSM adopt the exact same angle that we saw Eclipse pick up Achieved earlier on, but not anymore. They'll drop that off. Achieved will pick up Pamba Zoo, so he'll nade into Cash and take out that player. That'll give them control control this portion of the map. Bolo will be on the Finca, as to be expected, and Merc, Merc's off in La La Land. I don't exactly know what was going on there, but that's a dead Merc. And well, for the moment, take some time here for TSM to continue pushing through. It'll be down to the drone game. A couple here inside of Initiation Hyper will continue to just rest and wait to see what TSM can possibly get done next. Yes, they're down a man, but not only that, they're down quite a bit of impactful utility. Merc is somebody that can frag out at a moment's notice, and also those Twitch drones could do a pretty bang-up job of getting rid of a lot of these different utility pieces from Dark Zero. So things are going to go relatively quiet as Dark Zero peel back their own player base, happy with the one-to-one -one trade that transpired a few seconds prior. Still having a horizontal extension in Canadian's position as well, well over into the depths of the lab and billiards room. So still a little bit of delay potential built up into DZ's plan here, despite falling back and giving up second floor control for TSM. Of course, a few more nades, a few more flashes to chuck out here. Could be useful in dealing with Canadian's position more than anyone, and they do seem to have sussed it out to some extent. Canadian's got a few tools of his own. The last real piece of defensive utility is going to be chucked out there. Only Nitro Cell available for the team at this point was thrown out, but unsuccessful in its ability to deal damage, so no real impact being made here. Keep in mind, though, still making impact in his ability to waste time, as TSM will want to deal with him before assaulting the site, and they may not have the luxury of time to do that. Bolo leaps down and does finally catch Canadian, so now they can focus on this execute, but with, of course, a very limited time bank of only 20 seconds to go here. Well, it's a three versus four, so TSM will have the opportunity to trade out. NJR will be playing Furnace. Eclipse currently holding on to split. Hyper just playing the in-between, trying to assist where he can. Frag Grenade out. will deal some damage to Eclipse, so there's going to be a pro improper swing from Bolo. He'll get taken down by Eclipse. Eclipse for two. Eclipse finally gets taken out, and Shala will get one. It's a two versus one, but there's no time. The plan starts for Achieve. Shala has to watch this. He knows where Hyper is, and he loses the fight. Achieve's dead as well, oh, no. and Hyper clutches it up. Shala cannot clutch up. If there was a man that the number would be called upon, it would be him, but apparently just doesn't have it today. So close, so many chances for a correction as that initial spray volleys right away from him as well, but is not able to adjust his aim appropriately enough in time. The clutch comes out once again from DZ, who's starting to run away with this game now at a 5-2 to two score line with control of the defensive site choice as well, so they dictate the state of play from this point forward. It's back upstairs in a bunk in daycare for what could be the second to last round if DZ continues to go on this run right now. And it was so crazy winnable for TSM. Uh, you know, it's just, it's really, really weird 
weird at the current moment because I don't know really how to feel about TSM. I mean, uh, even that last round, I think there's a couple of different things that we can talk about. The thing that I want to talk about the most is what was Merck's decision inside of that opening minute that got him killed off in just the most random spot inside of the map? All of TSM is working cash side, trying to come through, clear things out, and then Merc is just all of a sudden inside of like bunkers. Like, I, why are you over here? I don't really understand what, what was going on with that. But, I mean, it is what it is. I'm sure if obviously he gets three people, we wouldn't be talking about it in the same light. Certainly not the case. So let's go ahead and take a look at the next round here with Dark Zero starting to maintain control over the series and TSM desperately trying to claw it back for themselves here. A huge list of things to clear out, unfortunately, as we're going to go to one of the busiest sites of attackers in terms of the amount of things they have to do just to get to a point where they can execute onto it. And we're going to see, you know, trying to see where TSM's throwing most of their players out at the start. Not making a decision, it looks like, on that just yet here. So not going to see any action really towards Cafe or Dragon Side just yet. Those will be the two options of how to press and clear this specific position here. And it's looking like they're starting to favor the arcade side a little bit more here. And there's definitely going to be a lot more presence from Dark Zero to clear out if that should become the case. But TSM will, of course, be aware of that. As you can see, Charles starting to clear out some of that utility inside oh. of the sites and actually doing quite a bit of damage to Pan, but drifts a bit too close to that as the hatch ends up being quite useful here for TSM. Yeah, that, that hatch is honestly in a prime position for Flores. You can just drop those drones down there and get rid of any utility that you're worried about inside of this defensive setup. Uh, the good news for Dark Zero, though, is that they're going to have some overwatch on this. Pambazoo will continue to play the area and is more than likely aware that Flores is attempting to drop these Rotero drones in. Merck won't be able to get rid of Man. the hologram, but he'll get rid of Eclipse instead. So I guess a little bit more bang for your buck. Nades have just been on point these past three rounds. Some clean ones indeed. TSM finding, of course, the most recent of the two we have caught here with them being right on point. But of course, not forgetting Dark Zero's clutch with one a few rounds back either. We're seeing the oh. ups tied down swing here no, against won't. Canadian. Canadian, Canadian. Oh, attempting to chase it down. Oh, nearly oh gets caught, though, as Merck. Some brilliant bait from him, and Geo nearly able to capitalize on him. Canadian now well aware of the situation. He is going to start to rotate himself out of this very precarious position and play the longevity game more than anything. Yes, indeed. And speaking of longevity, we're about two minutes into the round now. Dark Zero, they've done a pretty good job of delaying TSM, but now it's down to crunch time. How are they going to try and enter the building? Stun's out. Don't believe we'll see a swing from this, especially with Bolo going down. Things will be equalized here. Merck will go down as well as just none of this seemingly working out. Charlo will finally pick up the pieces, but they're going to need a lot more inside of the last 50 seconds. Perfect passive play so far here from Dark Zero. It's going to get a little bit dodgy now. It's been brought down to a 3B three here, but holding their players back, forcing TSM to swing directly into them. That was working out swimmingly, but TSM has made up the difference here despite the low HP on Chala. They've got arguably just as much to trade out there on the Canadian and Panba. Panba, speaking of which, nearly gets caught on the cross over there by the arcade window, but the timing does not align. Speaking of which, TSM starting to get a little low in that department. A little under 30 seconds to go here before they are out of time and need to have someone force the case down on the ground. Currently, oh. that would be Chala. A good start to this execute. There was another nade kill is found. That's the second one in just this round from TSM. So they take out Achieve with it. Panba on point, though, with these exchanges. Keeps the numbers even as he knocks Achieve right back down that rung on the ladder here. The rest of our attackers desperately searching for the final two members. They're going to find the first one. Now they've got to figure out where Canadian is, though, as he has just a sliver of HP remaining here to try and clutch this one out from the outside of the site. The plant already halfway down. Canadian with no real way to deny it, so he's going to have to clutch it now, and that's not going to happen either. Geo immediately shuts him down, and finally, a response is found from TSM on this attacking side. Oh, man, uh, I mean, it's around for sure, but it's sloppy. It's very, very sloppy. Uh, I feel like we, that describes most of this game, though, to be fair. You are 100% correct, my friend. Uh, you know, and it goes back to this whole entry game. Bolo and Merc cannot hit their mark at all. Like, wh whatever their idea of their entry game for this map, it's just, it's non-existent. They are taken out time and time and time again by Dark Zero, and it's nothing outlandish. They're not doing anything special. Uh, Merc and Bolo are just simply running into their crossfires, just running into the angles that are being held with no info to try and assist them. It's it's making things very, very strange. Luckily enough for TSM, they're able to trade things out in a positive way, but just look across the scoreboard right now, and you'll, you'll see what I mean. When's the last time that you saw Geo positive for TSM? That guy does so much heavy lifting for this team, 
and yet he's six and five. You look across the way, Chala, eight and five. Achieved eight and six. Merck and Bolo? Bolo's three and eight right now. That's not something that you see every day, especially with the other players popping off in the way that they do. Big shout out to Gio for this game as of right now because him and Chala are keeping them in this. Achieved has obviously done quite a bit, especially on the defensive side where we saw him delay for such a stupid amount of time over inside of maintenance. Uh, but past that, I mean, he's just been picking up those exit frags, picking up a couple of those, you know, outliers uh, here and there and making things a little bit easier for TSM in oh, that oh. <laughs> Bit of a, a soaring C4 gets chucked out there by Hyper. Needed a little bit more distance on that one. Take a few more steps out in the open and it might have actually landed on a Merc. But unfortunately, he's going to fall just a bit short there of the railing, I think, on that staircase leading up to Cafe. So will not be able to do the damage they were looking to do this time. Appreciate Dark Zero, though, being willing to chuck out their utility. But on this run, they do have quite a bit of it in terms of the Nitro Cell department, with three of them being in the lineup. So they actually can afford to chuck one or two of those out a bit haphazardly and hope that they can get away with a lucky kill. It's not going to happen at this round. 5v3, or rather a 5-3 to three score line for Dark Zero. They're still looking pretty good for them, and obviously on the defensive side, they have to be feeling pretty good about that score line, seeing as this is definitely, in my opinion, their stronger side at this point here. So not only are we going to have the info game now for TSM with Merc on the Jackal and Chala bringing in the Dokebi, but now we have Canadian, one of his hallmark ops, the OG man that taught me how to play this thing correctly, Pulse being brought in. And not only is it Pulse, but it's Pulse on a map that has multiple levels and a pretty solid basement area for him to work around. That's exactly what you want for a Pulse player because of that exact reason. Canadian takes out Geo, Merc will trade it out for Eclipse. Final Nitro Cell is chucked out by Panba. It's just going to land on the windowsill, though, and won't lead to a whole lot. But Hyper has some differences to make up to in that department. He manages to knock out Merc and keep the numbers in the favor of Dark Zero. Potentially making up for the lower HP on Panba as well. Things continue to look promising for our defenders as nearly two-thirds through the timer. And TSM only just now starting to clear out that second floor position. Still the whole transition down to the first to go. But to be fair, they are fairly forward-thinking in that area here. They've got two of the members of DZ locked in place over by Throne with a cutoff established already on the arcade stairs here so we can see things turn into the favor of TSM quite quickly and that is indeed the way it's going to start with Achieved picking up that initial kill versus Panba and now evening out the numbers yet again. Well, good news for Dark Zero is that Canadian is still alive so they'll have very solid info going forward via the cardiac sensor. Still have some interesting angles to deal with though especially NJR all the way in the back of lab just waiting to see if somebody will possibly hop the window. Stuns to burn, Bolo in. Can he possibly get the frag? NJR will get it instead, no. and he'll get two. Chala falls to the smoke as the call for TSM's rush falls flat, and that should be the last kill right there. Hyper will pick it up. Dark zero, 6-3 scoreline. TSM with no choice but to try and execute through the window. They're really banking everything on being able to pick up the frag against NJR, but the first one doesn't go his way. Second one as well falters, and that's pretty much the end of it right there. All in from TSM, and it does not work out. And that's going to set up for a potential map point here as Dark Zero sit up on six and TSM with three. Now TSM need to run three in a row, and quite oh. expectedly, we will see the tack timeout come in. Possibly a little bit too late for this, though. Ding. Point to Gryffindor. I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, you be, you got to elaborate a bit more than that. <laughs> Bing bong, does that one work better? like, ding, uh, thank you, Stokes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my analysis for this situation, guys. Ding, that's it. Uh, but, uh, no, nah, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I think that this is way too late for Poach to be calling this. If, if anything, as soon as that hit 3-5, that's your tech timeout, for sure. Uh, I, I don't really know what you do in this situation, uh, mostly because Dark Zero have defense. I mean, they're basically yep. allowed to dictate the way that you're going to have to clear the map. So it's going to be very hard fought for TSM going forward. They have to get three rounds in a row. Uh, and I, I really don't know what Poge calls for the switch up here. Maybe we see some stronger entry. Maybe, you know, Bolo and Merc try and clear out portions of the map together instead of like the this, throne defense too. Yeah, this kind of like separate, you know, uh, entity thing that we have going on right now where they're on two completely different sides of the map or really just not even coexisting. It's just, it's very very, very strange. But as you said, we are indeed going to be on a thrown defense, which could throw a spanner in the works. That's going to make it very, very difficult indeed for TSM to get appropriate access to it, especially with the very minimal amount of hard breach they're going to bring to the table. The good news is, of course, plenty of nades to be seen across their lineup. Should be at least six right there. So that is going to hopefully more than make up for the lack of utility clear they have from a potential Thatcher or something like that. That would allow Geo to actually get 
the maintenance walls open. So the nades will have to be well primed indeed, as of course there's going to be mitigation for that in the DZ department. It's going to be quite small though, as it's just going to be the mute jammers being brought to the table by Canadians. There shouldn't be too much of a problem for TSM to work past that. It's more the issue of getting into the actual room that will become the problem, as we've already seen Dark Zero be called by that attempt on a few rounds prior. Okay, well, TSM starting off like most teams do. It's going to be Cash Balcony across here. Free fire to break open the window, but that's obviously going to run them into one of Alibi's clones and will give away their location for the time being. Pambazoo playing quite aggressively here. Oh, not oh, no. worried about the lower angle Merc. That was beautiful. I mean, not exactly a troll angle, but that's one of those off angles that, like, you're really not going to worry about with that hologram sitting there. It almost looks like another part of the hologram. Some great stuff here, some great misdirection coming in from TSM, and it sets them up well, but Dark Zero is not going to take that without a fight, it seems. Canadian already rotating in towards office here is going to try to counter that position out by going through into the showers that connects to the cash room, but does manage to back away from that after seeing the peak from Merc. Thinks it's not the right time for this. However, he's back for more. Oh, and the timing is perfect. Gets immediate revenge for the loss of his own teammate and is now just going to back away through the rotate. There is a minute and 48 seconds, no drone for any of office or anything, and Merc just walks in off the balcony. It's a free kill for Dark Zero, but luckily enough for TSM, they're still ahead in the man count. Geo's gotten himself into Cafe. Has two to worry about inside of the same space as him, but we'll see if any of them want to try and challenge. Dark Zero more than likely continue to try and waste time. There's still a lot of utility around this area, so we'll be able to hold on to this, at least for the moment. Remember, this is actually a thrown defense as well, and it's going to make quite a bit of sense for DZ to also fall back. They don't have have to hold on to that area. Uh, TSM are still going to be forced to clear it out. They got to drone things properly and make sure that they know what's going on. And speaking of what's going on, the hash upstairs has actually been opened, mostly due to the fact that Dark Zero did not actually bring any utility to deal with this. It looks like it was also a secondary fallback strategy that they were using on this top floor as well. Uh, no hard breach has been used by Geo. It was simply opened up, and DZ had a moment to try and fall back on that. Could have obviously it went the wrong way with Bolo looking through that hatch there for a moment so the timing could have got them into some trouble but speaking of timing things could go pretty wrong as of right now Those back bars. and forth they go and achieve loses against the m590 njr just spraying and praying with the shotgun there but it works out as he finally catches a good one on to achieve through all that metal and is able to open up the opportunity here's the problem though dark zero are still split up heavily because they were brought down to three before this execute got started now the numbers were even out for a second big swing from eclipse but he's going to be caught chal is already on the lower level he's misread it hyper exchanges but now he's alone in the 1v2, but he does have this reduced to a 1v1. Can he find oh! that planter? He was so close, but it's not going to happen. And instead, TSM sneaks off the kill on him, and they take the first of three rounds needed to trigger overtime. Now, that's knowing your angles. <laughs> that is what that is. What that is. Oh, my goodness gracious. You guys better jump in the lab right now and start breaking up some walls and learn about this, because Hyper is on one for a moment there, but unfortunately enough for him, TSM will pull a rabbit out of the hat and gather the round. It was looking pretty worrisome there as it was getting down to low time. It really seemed like Dark Zero was going to have the opportunity to close this out, but after some big kills from TSM and some, uh, well, let's just say ill-advised aggression towards Dragon, TSM will end up picking that one up. And now for TSM, back to basics here. Merc back on the Yana, one of the tried and true for him. Bolo will maintain, though, sitting on the Finca. Yeah, so Dark Zero just ends up losing a little bit too much of their player base there, as you said, with the Dragon push working itself out there, just trying to make up for the differences between their initial loss player and Canadian trying to mess around with that. Also, things did not pan out too well for them, and then they were spread too thin in the actual room that they needed to defend back down towards Throne, so things just didn't really pan out well for them. A few uh, changes going to be brought to the table here for TSM, mainly thematic, but we also are going to see an Intel off get swapped over for Utility Clear, and that Flores is going to be changed out for the Dokabi with Chala bringing the earlier of those two into the fold. Geo just changes to a different type of hard breach, so not going to see much major, majorly to talk about there. And aside from that, the round will get started with a very familiar setup here for Dark Zero. So let's see how exactly TSM try to break it down one more time, as Dark Zero also still on the threshold of closing this game down. We'll see if they can get it done here with the bunk daycare defense. John, it's going to be an extended hold out towards office, but that's to be expected. They'll reinforce the double panel here as well as barricade up some of these doors and make make Hyper's life a little bit easier. I'll give them an audio cue on those, and I'm sure that everyone has uh, fallen victim to the boarding of doors in casual, where you just board literally every door around the entire map and practically just troll the offense. This is just a very, very, 
very small version of that. You can see it all the way over to the initiation door as well. So now for TSM, to pop all of these open. And as you can see, with all that gunfire, Dark Zero know exactly where this push is coming from now. Good stuff from Dark Zero. And Ooh. This is going to be even more I love this. Yeah. Panbazoo repositioning that deployable shield there is going to put it actually directly behind Oh, the John, look at that. Gate. And they have a cross for it. With the laser gate. Well. Yep. Panba picks up the first of these exchanges. He's going to be able to knock out Merc, knocking him down. That puts us into a 5v4. This is going to be so tough for TSM to work their way past, especially with us already being halfway through the round. They can see it. I mean, you can see this drone roaming around by Hyper, but they still have to figure out how to deal with it here because there's just so many options. Yeah. He's got a Hyper, Hyper can play this from like three different positions. And TSM just have to guess where he is, basically, if they don't have a drone actively on him. I am not envious of TSM's <laughs> position in the slightest right now. That right there that is some dz big brain stuff I, I love everything about that vault setup that was fantastic flora's drone now to get rid of the electro nope. claw? no i don't believe so the electro claw might honestly not even be here it might be downstairs hard to say though we'll have to figure it out tsm though they're stuck for the time being with a minute remaining and dz at full power Try to bank this one off the corner, but there's an ADS there, so that one's going to eat it up. Man, they even have a cross from the other side of office for Canadian, too, crossing inside the cross. of B. So <laughs> they just cannot clear out that position in the back of Vault there because there's so many angles to work past it. They just don't really have time to do it at this point. 40 seconds remaining here. You can see a few members of TSM have kind of brute forced their way up to it. So it looks like the members of DZ are going to give it up, but that's just because they've wasted enough time. And there's not really a reason to leave that player out on an island anymore. There's a very late entry attempt that's going to come in here from Chala into Cafe. Even just now seeing the barricade go down at 30 seconds left. Oh. That's a good start to the execute, oh. though. And an even better follow-up from Geo as Panba goes down. Things were looking so bleak from TSM, but they might very well take this round anyway. Hyper starts the trades, though, and it's going to go downhill fast for this attack on TSM. Achieve the only one left. Walking right into a headshot angle for Canadian, but he can't connect the shot. Let's see if a Nitro will do it instead. No, instead he has to call in for some help. NJR secures the final kill of the match. It's DZ to take Take it here today. Well, I'm interested to see what our analysts have to say about TSM's play style on Theme Park. This is the third time that they've went to it in the NAL this stage. At least the third time. And I'm pretty sure they've lost it every single time. Yep. And I, I mean, even like some of the change-ups that they had on their defensive end, I mean, it was meaningless. It really was, especially in comparison to the strategy that Dark Zero brought for their defenses. It was just much more robust. It looked more fulfilled. It looked like they had a very deep understanding of the way that they needed to play defense on that side of the map. And you can't say the same for TSM. You just can't. Like, they, they looked lost in comparison to Dark Zero. Yeah, no surprises there on the defensive side of, side of things for DZ. That's kind of what we talked about in the pregame is that, okay, DZ's got a really solid defensive side. They need to work on the attack. And while those issues still surfaced on the attacking side, it was not to enough of a detrimental degree where they weren't going to be able to bounce back from it in the second half. And I think that's in large part what they were looking to rely on in order to bring themselves back towards it. Very, very messy first half. We had these crazy gunfights going on where like neither team could seem to get an advantage. But unfortunately, those issues for TSM carried forward into their own attacking side as well. And because of that, the instability allowed for DZ to take a large majority of these rounds and kind of run away with the game here towards the end. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it was anything insane that Dark Zero was doing today, but I mean, it is what it is. I think that a lot of the defensive strategies were quite interesting. Personally, I'm going to go back and look at those. But guys, that's going to do it for us initially here for today. We're going to send you to a small break. We'll be back with the analyst desk.
problems for the defending world champions only continue to deepen after they now find themselves with only four points and the gap in the top four continuing to close. But on the flip side of the equation, Dark Zero continuing their rise a little bit. And we've got Mint on the other line in Las Vegas to help describe the scene for us. Mint, congratulations on this win. It seems like you guys are beginning to rack these up more consistently now. But talk to me about the theme park bit, uh, the theme park pick a little bit more. Was that more of a case where you figured it was good to go against a TSM team that was struggling? Or did you like this map for other reasons? Uh, yeah, a little bit of both. Um, obviously, there's two VODs on them. So they've been struggling a little bit on theme park versus OXG and Mirage. So we kind of could see like some of their weaknesses a little bit where, you know, we felt like teams were kind of doing that to us, being able to look at our maps. Um, so yeah, it was just, it, it, obviously it's a comfort, comfort map for us. Um, and then just being able to expose kind of their weaknesses on that. I want to talk to you a little bit about what you just said with like uh, some of your maps being kind of exposed because for the three new maps that we have added to the pool this stage, you guys actually hadn't played any of them until this game right okay. here. So I know you're practicing them in the background and such, but is this something that you're trying to hide for maybe bigger games or is it just that it hasn't come up so far? Um, I, we weren't so comfortable on them in the beginning, mm -hmm. I guess. Like, like you said, we were kind of practicing uh, them um, but when we go against like these these more top teams like the TSM, the SSG, like the rest of our our schedule, pretty much, it's kind of like we now kind of have to bust them out, and all of them. I mean, especially Theme Park today, right? Like it, it kind of showed. Like we've been putting work on that map. We're mm -hmm. definitely comfortable going to other maps. Um, but yeah, just it was kind of us practicing them and also them kind of being saved a little bit uh, just for the other opponents. Yeah, and so going into a little bit more specifics on your side of the defensive side, as soon as like sort of everything switched, all those rounds became incredibly close. Was there any sort of like hecticness yeah. towards that last execute phase? I don't think so. I think the guys kind of realized that TSM was kind of attacking very slow. The ones that were mm -hmm. hectic were, you know, they got opening picks on us or, you know, they were, uh, we were kind of fighting a little too early. Um, the guys kind of like realized that during the timeout, especially like, kind of calm down let's wait till the end game um the defense in general just gets hectic in this game especially with all the grenades the late rounds and stuff like that but no the guys kept their cool and uh we just kind of adjusted to, to how they were attacking us last one's a bit of an odd question but as the latest team to now take down the current defending world champions what's the thing that you can tell at least from how this game went or from any other vods that you've reviewed so far that you think tsm's biggest weakness is probably the one thing that you can think of that would maybe help them in the future if they wanted to try to turn the ship around um i mean obviously they're gonna know a lot more than i am they're on the inside but uh they've always kind of kept a lot of the same stuff um Usually they don't re kind of refresh their playbook a little bit. Um, and I mean, you know, playing theme park today, it was a lot of the same things that we've kind of seen. And I mean, it's hard to kind of change things on the six days or whatever it was since the last time they played notice. But yeah, just uh, a lot of their stuff's kind of kind of stale and easy to read into. But obviously, I mean, they, they won invite. Obviously the formula works. Empire does it in EU. Um, but yeah, I, th I think it's just e easier sometimes for us NA teams who play them often to uh, kind of kind of figure them out well it seems like that kind of familiarity was something that really helped propel you to the win today mint again congratulations on dz's win go celebrate that one and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow all right thank you very much all right so dark zero back on the right path it seems like looking for that top four finish they're still within that contention at this point right up there with your x set your beast coast your astralis types but now the real concern probably is still TSM side because they're still there with only four points. Like the amount of points that you need in the stage like this is greater than it was for any of stages in the past with one more team. But is that grace period for TSM kind of beginning to run out now? Yeah, we're really getting worried if we're talking about TSM or the major. I think at this point we'll realistically start writing it off. Not mathematically, they could create a miracle, but it's going to be very difficult. Dark Zero for their part in this fantastic match have jumped up now into a top four spot. Will they hold it? We'll have to find out. But this is a great game overall, and it definitely felt like we had some uh, strong players on both sides. Yeah, I was saying that this was a litmus test for Dark Zero. Can they actually compete against the top side teams? And, I mean, if you look at the stats, it, it seems like they definitely did. Hyper absolutely popped off, as well as NJR and Pamba always doing well. 
Yeah, and this is what I'm talking about, right? Like, Achieved actually didn't have a bad game at all. 91 cost is very high for a losing team. 11-9 overall. It felt like on some of his roams, like, his positioning was really good. He had a lot of opportunities. Didn't always capitalize on them enough to make it into, like, a really easy round for TSM. But there were still flashes of greatness. And we've seen this from TSM throughout the stage so far. It's not like everything is falling apart. But when you're going up against such strong competition, you kind of need everything clicking. Not saying that everything is entirely on one player's shoulders either, but it feels like the guys who were statistically statistically at the top back during the Sixth Invitational, Merck and Bolo, two of the players you expect are usually always like mid-tier on scoreboards and nothing else. They're playing aggressive, it's defensive kills, it's playing Finca. Everything just kind of feels off in that regard specifically. It feels like achieved and Shala's consistency has been noted and Geo doesn't necessarily need to sparkle on the scoreboard, but we're looking at the two players again at the bottom as potential weak points, pressure points. And that was even from what Merck himself said about their own consistency or inconsistency because of the way they've played in the North American League so far. And for, it, something along the way for this TSM roster just seems completely out of line. Yeah, I mean, we talk about him like constantly, but it is, it's Bolo again, struggling in another one of these matchups. Felt like obviously on his defense, he had a couple of opening deaths there that were uh, maybe could have been avoided. Even on some of his entries though, like playing Finca, there were a couple of times where it's like, well, he's jumping in, he's, he's pre-firing, but like crosshair placement's not right in the right spots. And sometimes he's struggling to find some kills there. So. Maybe individual just needs to pick it up. Maybe it's something mental. It's hard to say, really. There was one particular setup you wanted to take a deeper look at, right? Are we doing? Are we doing the walk? You're gonna, do the walk. You're, you're gonna follow him while he walks over. Look at. Let's do you. a little bit of a walk. Walk past my my good friend Connor. Yes. But we'll go to the go. TV over here, go have fun. where we can do some telestration work for our friends here over on Dark Zero. Now, I want to focus on this uh, highlight play going on right now. It's round number six, and what we can see is this is going to be a bottom floor lab storage defense, but a big roam top floor for TSM. You can see their players in orange, their top floor players right now, going to be running around. Let's find them. We got one top arcade stairs. If we've got him here, there he is. All right, we got one here in kids, and then we've got another player just top of yellow. So we've got a couple different defenders, and then looking at where the attackers are positioned right now, what are they really worried about? Well, we can see that they're very much confident they can defend against maybe an, a cafe entrance, right? That shouldn't be a problem. The stairs are also covered from a long angle from this player over here. And if we're coming from the right-hand side of the map, obviously this player is going to be able to shut that down if we're trying to enter in through the waiting room or any of those angles down below, even into from initiation. But the problem with maybe this, uh, this setup is if somebody were managing to come up these yellow stairs, well, all of a sudden, this guy's not watching for it. It's not a great position. This guy's going to lose some of his rotates if he's trying to go over towards waiting for a swing. And then this guy's going to have no teammates left. But thankfully, it's a lab storage defense. So there's no way that should happen. Geo's covering it down below. If we press play, we might be able to find out. That doesn't always happen. Look at the bottom there. Geo, you'll see it in the kill feed in just a moment. Shut down by Canadian. He was watching yellow, and Pamba is already up it. He's, there, he's able to come in with the flank, help his team out to clear this top floor, and now TSM are crumbling. You'll see them running around here, trying to get some kills, but they're just all out of position. They're going to be able to find a few, but ultimately so many players die in this execute. One of them was down below to start things off that opened the, uh, up the push in general. And they start to fight it back, but these can get traded because that's positions being called. That's pre-fires happening and TSM end up with a massive man disadvantage. Dark Zero will eventually clutch out that 2v1 and win the round. But that was the top floor clear from Dark Zero. Feels like a lot of coordination. The droning is always on point. Thank you, Jesse, for the additional information on the Telestrator. But is that more a case of Dark Zero playing into their strengths or TSM still feeling as though something doesn't click the way that it used to? I think that that was around that Dark Zero definitely won. Sure, TSM, slight mistakes here and there, but when you are talking about a game that it's such minute details, it's such little tiny things, you have to give the credit to the team like Dark Zero mm -hmm. that are finding those little tiny holes and just absolutely exploiting them. What do you think about this one overall for Dark Zero though? Like in the hierarchy of the North American League, kind of getting back to that old guard status that they've had for a really long time, doesn't it really seem like they've had too many issues at this stage. It was just like what one to two mm -hmm. hiccups. Whenever Dark Zero has a problem, it feels like it persists for a long time. But win over TSM, because of TSM struggles, how much does this actually mean? I still think it means a lot, no matter what you, even when we were just talking with Mitt in the interview, he said top teams like SSG and TSM. Even if TSM aren't performing, they're still putting up the kind of results that you never can count them out. They're always still respected. It's still yeah. a big win. If you come in and you beat TSM, even if they're 0-5, you're still going to be like, yeah, let's go, yeah. we beat TSM. It's still a massive victory. Yeah, I love the way Dark Zero is playing right now. I'm saying right now, DZ to the major. 
I see it. I can see the forecast. I like I like their play so far. Said the it, packs me. are looking good. I know they had a tough schedule. I don't care. These are making it happen. Probably, given the way that the entire top four is beginning to shake out. But more of those questions will be answered when we come back. Game three is on the horizon, and we'll keep on figuring out who our top four for the next major is going to be. We'll be right back after a short break. Don't go anywhere.